Off Table Racers, a special edition on this Saturday. We're coming live from Hot Shots in Mooresville, and I appreciate it. My name is Tim Peck, and sitting right here is Mark Rosal, and we are the Pub Table Racers. And uh, first of all, we want to thank you very much. This show is brought to you by Lake Miller Patio Game Rooms on Brawley School Road uh, between Oak and Cam Camas Bag near there. Go and go see Brad, JoJo, Patrick. Great fall specials going on right now. The uh, game room, Warren, has been totally redone Redone. downstairs. We did a, we did a broadcast yeah. there. So go see them, and we appreciate uh, them being part of it, and we uh, appreciate you all being here. Now, Warren, why do we have a bucket of beer, Miller Highlight, in front of us all the time? You're on account of me. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 1983 NASCAR Cup Series champion, three-time Daytona 500 winner, six-time most popular driver, the multiple wins in the Coca-Cola 600, the Talladega 500, Daytona 500, one other one, Kansas, oh, Southern Darlington, National. Darlington, oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> Darlington, and, yeah, again, the Southern 500, Atlanta. right, and he's also NASCAR Hall of Famer, he was in the second class, um, ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Allison, right here, for one and all, appreciate it, so, you got a beer, I got a, I you got, got a beer, I got, I got, I got one, so here we go, here's how we start them. So, cheers, Bobby. Thank, thank you, you so much here. for being on with us. Thank you. It's an honor. And I have to drink, otherwise, we're going to go and get some uh, crappy um, text messages because I didn't yeah, partake. Tell me you didn't take I a didn't drink. take a sip, so here you go. Okay, Bobby, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Okay? Good. Glad you're here. Yeah, I'm glad to be here, too. Good. first fly here. Have you ever been in here? I have not. Okay. I have been by here. Never just never slurred. Never slowed down. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Looks like I should have. Yeah, it's a big sure. nice place. So it's a fun yeah. place. If you're in the Mooresville area, we're here till seven o'clock coming out. Uh, the food here is delicious, wings, pizza, other great items. Okay. Right. So uh, big place, good atmosphere, hot shots, sports pub. That's it. Okay. People tune in like crazy all over the country here. Just so you know. Um, we had some people uh, sending some questions and uh, we'll get those uh, take those first um, Ronnie Hoover, uh, we worked with him at Dale Earnhardt, or Richard Chills Racing. Yeah. He said, did you did you bring front steer style cars to NASCAR? Was that something you had in, or was it here before that? Actually, actually way back in the old days, I had front steer style cars. Front steer style cars. Uh, the early Chevrolet and Pontiac did have a front steer system in it. Game. They were already front steer, yeah. so so you didn't necessarily innovate that. It was already on the stock piece. Yeah, but uh, I like to be Chevelle. Yeah, that's what I really like. It. It's on the tag, yeah. and uh, had a little help getting that in by my good friend along the way, and, yep. and uh, it really it really worked out. Fifth race, like, perfect. Where, which was where? Oxford, Maine. Oxford, Maine. There you go. So a little uh, New, uh, New England area racing. Right. Yeah. Um, Out of the old Northern Tour. Okay. Which the Northern Tour, which now then became the Bush Tour, Bush North, or is that no, Northern uh, Tour of NASCAR? No, it's, uh, they, they dropped it. Grand National Northern Tour. Okay. Right yeah, now. The, the, the Chevelle was the uh, NASCAR sportsman at the time, right? Was it, just, it was a smaller. Actually, it was not. It wasn't? Okay. Chevelle was in between five and the rules government. Okay. They had decided to downsize the car. And the board came with the fairway. And the model of Teddy ran So was it uh, the, the, the sedan size or was it the wheelbase? What, it, what was the, do you, do you remember? The wheel, wheelbase, I guess. Okay. Early on, uh, I'm looking at it was 120 inches. Early on, and then they went to 110, right? And that's what the Chevelle went to. Actually, they went to 115. 115, okay. All right. Sure. So then they got to use the smaller sedan, um, but um, they were somewhat uh, sports sedans. Let's call them that. Or I, I wouldn't call muscle car. Really, really wasn't that much of a muscle car compared to a Chevelle. Yeah. Well, they did. They did come with the big wheels. The 
little of cars, yeah. That was, that was their trade. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we know you, we're getting some time. There's a lot of background noise here. We're starting reading, uh, you know, it's, it's a big place, so uh, we're going to speak up for you as best we can. Tim and I are going to do the best we're we can. Bobby and we're going to help Bobby. We're going to be great. With we'll be fine. his questions. So we'll be good. Um, so uh, Tom Bainey's a big uh, fan of our show and yours as well. Uh, he's from New Jersey, and he wants to know, uh, as an owner-driver, why did you have the number 22? Where did that come from? Well, the combination of a lot of different things along the way. Uh, I started out with number two. Uh, so started number two, right? My, my first modified number was 312. 312. 312 on a modified, yep. I have a 3 dd number. I worked with a guy named Marty Hanshaw down in Miami, and he drove for a guy named Ritter, and, and the car was 112. And Marty was 12. So uh, I decided I wanted a car in 8 and 12. And so uh, I said, well, I just be 312. And then when I looked at it, well, I, I was born on the 3rd of December, right. so it was kind of a perfect deal anyway. Perfect. 312. So, so I was 312. So the 22 came from the 2, you just added on another 22 one. 22 came available. It was the only, only number with the 2 in it. Right. It's the time. And uh, I got the... So, and, and went back and forth and then number 12, went back to 22, and right. drove around a few other numbers. Drove for, for Cotton Owens, that was number 6. Right. First time I drove for Holman Moody, it was number 11. Right. And then uh, second time with Holman Moody, it was 12. 12, okay. And, and, uh, and then drove for Pinsky, and it was 14, and then 12 first, and then 14. And, uh, then number two. Okay. So I, I work in the Penske shop right now, and uh, even just the other day, because you know Roger plasters everybody's stuff. Yeah. We have a lot of uh, of his uh, uh, how can I say it nostalgia right. posters and and big big murals of, uh, of of drivers and of their cars. And and uh, the Matador. I see beautiful. I'm telling you. Yeah, I love going there. The the, the Matador. Your your uh, your pictures up there with the Matador. And the Matador's up there, and that red, white, blue. You know, matter. And you know, me growing up as a, as a young kid, you know, seeing that car right. many times. You know, we didn't think much of Matadors when we were when we were kids. Uh, but uh, that and and so my grandfather worked at the EMC plant in Kenosha for 40 years. So, yeah, yeah. you know, that was kind of like, all right, well, there's the man, all of a sudden it became a, it, an attractive thing. Yes, you know? yes. Right. But yeah, it's cool seeing your stuff up there and Dan Gurney and, you know, uh, just and all the other guys that have yeah. driven for Roger. He, he keeps a nice shop, but. Yeah. So, you talked about the Miller Highlight quite a bit, of course, because yeah. you. How did that relationship start? How did that, where did that all come together? That's I, I was uh, racing on uh, driving to that guard. Right. And uh, our guard, somebody contacted that guard. I believe it was Sam Bell Mavis. Oh, Sam Bell Mavis, okay. Contacted that guard. <laughs> so they called you. Yeah. Wow. Well, now that's rare these days for a sponsor to call a team and go, "Hey." Yeah. Well, you think of the the era, right? That's right. True. And and uh, there was probably a Budweiser car already out there. Right. Yeah, there was. And, right. Yeah, with Junior and stuff and that. Right. Yeah. So so Miller had to get out there. Yeah. And better to right. represent that than. This man sitting next to us right here. Who's, uh, well, and I was really proud of that whole deal too because uh, you know, there was a bunch on the car, and then we did quite well right away. And, right. Uh, a lot of people thought, well, uh, you know, uh, it isn't as big as Budweiser and maybe somebody else. But I think uh, when I worked with them, they were sixth in sales at the time. 
Okay. And so there's six in sales. First year they were second. All right. So being on the car when you went in, you went from six to second. Yes. In one year. So, no, I, so I we're just going to say you put Miller High Life on the map. How's that? That's right. Okay, we'll go with it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I'm from Wisconsin, but I'm okay. I'm okay with you saying that. I'm okay with that statement. But, right. You know, it's always been on the map. Oh, it's, it's always on the map. But I'm he just maybe, saying, I'll put it like up this. there. He took it to Alabama and showed right. them boys what beer is really all about. <laughs> so it's safe to say Miller beer to you in Wisconsin is what chicken wings are in Buffalo? Yes, and, okay. and or, and or what Budweiser is, right. is someone in St. Louis. So we're here at Hot Shots in Mooresville on 150 right by the bend. Uh, if you're going up to towards Lancaster, you're there. Uh, we have Bobby Allison, Lewis Hall of Famer. Uh, we are here till 7. We are here for after that show till 7. Uh, Bobby brought a bunch of die cast books, hats, we got stuff. So come on out and you stop it up by one beer. beer. <laughs> wow. He didn't even buy me one for my birthday yesterday. <laughs> oh, he's probably gonna choose. Get me a beer now. <laughs> so, by the way, thank oh, you everybody for the birthday free. wishes. And those of you people that didn't, I've given Santa Claus all your names. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Right, got it. Uh-huh. All right, uh, we uh, another question we have here is uh, the recent changes to NASCAR. Uh, what do you feel about those specifically, like the stage racing? Actually, I think the stage races are pretty good. Um, yeah. I, I like the format, uh, with the, especially the way the newest uh, car in or the car yesterday, or right. whatever the thing is. <laughs> whatever it is. Uh, uh, Gen 6 right now, or Gen 7. Uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And, you know, they need some help because obviously the fans don't like it. Right. Because the funny seats available in the grand, every grandstand that you look at. Right. Which is really an amazing thing for, for somebody like me, on a marker, to look at the stands that were so packed when we were in. Yeah. And see them so empty. So, with the, I'm just me adding this. Um, so, when you were racing, the stands were always pretty much full, weren't they? Yeah. They were. And that was before TV coverage, war, and everything else we had. Well, that's when you go and see a race, you know, you guys. Well, so let me let me ask Bobby this because this has always been my theory on, you know, I've seen, I've been in a sport long enough to see the cars that come off the assembly line turn into a, a, a race car, and also cars that are not even close to being a stock car that we still call stock cars. And, and what I'd like to see, I, I always, my opinion is to say we should have to use stock parts and pieces to make these cars be stock cars. Got you know, I would even I want them safe. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I, I want a roll cage and I, I want the safety factor and I want all that. I'm not saying take a car out of bottom show and, and go 200 miles an hour with it. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying we should still be taking a sheet metal like you guys used to have to do and, and maybe manipulating a little bit but taking stock sheet metal from the manufacturer and, and you have to run the same bumper if you had to run if you had to run the bumper there's certain parts of the you had to run and, and we should have to do that now and I think I think you would have better racing I think you'd have uh, you need a, a less aero dependent car and put it back in the hands of the driver you know, we're, we're into stuff that has side force and down force and underbody and, and, and all this other stuff. And, and I think we've gotten away from the grassroots of stock car racing. Well, yeah. Bobby has a thing. What, what's the best engineer in racing? Yeah, yeah your, your butt, right? Yeah, yeah. And Bobby also theory. okay, when an engineer makes a change, what, what's the thing he should have to do after he makes a change in the car? Yeah. Especially the modern engineers. When they may change the car, I feel like they should have to ride two laps in, the, in there with you. That's the side of the car. Absolutely. I so can see what the changes are. Yeah, right? especially if they cut it off a sim program, right? <laughs> right. Simulation <laughs> program. <laughs> then they should have to... Well, and then when you're showing them, hey, that, that didn't work. <laughs> He's in the car with you. Okay, um, so here's a question. Um, what did it feel like to be the very first driver to go 200 miles an hour? They what? They never let me in the car until Saturday. And they were how many days? It was the tail of the day, right? We were there from Tuesday on. Five days. 
Okay. So what what time was it? Nine test car. Dodge test car. Number nine. Ninety-nine. Actually, it might have been Okay, so let me not two hundred. Let me ask you this: Was that car taken off of a, of a showroom floor? No. no. What? So it was it was completely handmade. Yeah, handmade. Okay, it was a handmade car. Yeah. It was the same guides that everybody was running, except for the. Okay. But it was all parts and pieces you could buy from it? Yeah. Okay. So you went 199.9 miles an hour. Electric car. Electric car. Okay. So, go ahead. They said, well, we got to go home. So we got to go home. Okay. So Charlie and Buddy were running for three, you still not done the car? Yeah. Okay. I didn't have the car at one time. Okay, nice. On Saturday. Okay, got it. Yeah. So so you went 200. So, so Dave Chanette, very true. That's I gotta true. ask. I gotta. Did Did you have to lift? No. Okay. So that was wide open. Right. Uh, uh, some kind of cheesy little bias my tire on that thing, probably. Probably not a very. Not like what we have now. Well, but it was pretty good. Tire. Pretty good. Good year. Good year. Did something. they come up with something special for that? Well, what happened? Uh, the good year tore up, and the fire came tore up. The good year. Went, went to work. Okay. So, all right. We have a question from um, Bill Richter. Um, what's your least? What was your least favorite trip? It's really hard to think. Okay. So, like, what one frustrated you? How's that? Mine's were frustrated me, but I love it. And we were talking, that, and Warren and us, as good a short track race you were, right. one of the few places you don't have a win was in Marksville. The only place. Yeah. We ran a lot, a lot. Yeah. And I don't have a couple. Right. And, and you also made a modified there one day. Yep. Yeah. 
but uh, that doesn't count. You made a statement that you might have led more laps than Richard Petty, and you still didn't have a win there. So you know, it's a, so you obviously ran good there at times, uh, but yeah. you just it didn't finish good. It did not finish good. Right. Okay, and that happens. Yeah. Uh, here's one, Ed Moody. Uh, what do you remember most about racing at Mossport, Canadian track? Actually, uh, Mossport, Canadian track. Uh, uh, so we, we ran the. Uh, okay, yeah, Mossport was a road course, but I think they had an oval somehow incorporated with the track. We ran on. I'm trying to think that. I really enjoyed the Canada race. I wanted to use it. I won one other track up there somewhere, but did not win a boss Okay. Very nice. So this is what we had there. Uh, yeah, okay, we're trying to get we're trying to get the volume we're, we're working on it. We're just the first time we've done it at a pub and the right. noise in the back which fine. We get a lot of background right. noise for struggling uh, a little bit here with yep. that. We're getting we're, so we're we gotta make a better shot or we need a <laughs> we need a microphone on a table. We the table. But we're getting there, modern technology. Warren built this really nice shroud to go over the camera all by himself and painted it great. Um, so anyhow, so the um, other questions we had here about taking beer to the Okay, um, so drivers today, who's one that you like look at and you, you like enjoy watching him, him race? Right there. Well, there, there are a few that I really like. Carvick. Uh, Carvick, yep. yeah. I like Ryan Blaney. Yeah, I like, I like Ryan Blaney and Joey Logano. Because you work with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're both pretty good. Yeah, they are pretty good, yes. Uh, Harvick, he, he has, you, one time we were talking, you said he was kind of like David Pearson. Yeah. Like he, you know, so Pearson, Pearson's story, though, what is it, your observation running with him? David, David, went fast and did right there. I could keep David in the race, he'd back off and he'd pass me. And he'd drive behind me and save his car and yeah. save his car right. and save his car. And then when it's time to go for a win, his car would still be all 100% and okay. mine would probably have the fender drive. It'd be a little bit used up. Tires would be smoking yeah. a little bit. A few other things like that. Yeah. That's he, definitely he, Harvick uh, stuff there. And, and there, and I looked over there, and there's that David Pierce over there in Big Three Nights, and all the way to Church Trophy Road. <laughs> so you're, you're on the road, wonder what happened, he's over in Big Three Lane with the Trophy Girls. Huh? Yeah. Nice, give him kisses and everything. You, you had your share of those, too. Yeah. I've seen some pictures, right? Yeah. Um, what's the one thing you miss about it? Just the competition. Competition? Yeah, I love it. I love the competition. That's good. Um, Who's the one driver back in your area that you just didn't want to deal with? Like if you, minus the 79 days, <laughs> I think, but who's the one that you, would think, oh, i got to pass this guy, you know it's going to be difficult. Like people, like today, Ryan Newman, you say Ryan Newman, difficult. Who? Kale. Kale Yarbrough? Yeah. Um, Kale, if he was 10 laps behind you, he would really race your heart. If he was 10 laps behind you, he Kind of makes sense. Right. It was a boxing match in the 79 day Daytona 500. Did you see that where they had to beat him like this with his nose? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got fined for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're joking, you got fined and they made $42 million off it. Yeah. And, and the beauty of that story, so I'm, I'm a kid and I'm watching that with my dad on, on a wide world of sports. Yeah. Yeah. It was on CBS. It was on CBS. And it was the very first fully broadcast race. Yes, and I'm, I'm watching that, and, you know, they're kind of like, oh, they're wrecking the flat cluster, and then, then there, here comes the skirmish. And, you know, as a kid, you're kind of like, wow, these guys are <laughs> nuts. These guys are they're really serious. They're serious <laughs> about their race car, aren't they? <laughs> no. Yeah, but the thing was, you, you had already... You spun early in the race, and you were yeah. you caught in the mud. All three, all three, all three of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're, right. we're drafting with each other. And, uh, I had won the race the year before. I was in the same car, and it was still really, really good. But not even in the hot sauce car, and 
in lane. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure Donnie's car handled as good as uh, mine did, but and Kale was a bulldog anyway. I'm not sure that they worked real hard in that car. He was in Gene Johnson's car. And uh, he uh, he could draft, but he couldn't pass me or die. Okay. And uh, so we all fun. Hill and I got stuck in the mud. Uh, it rained the night before. Yep. And he was on the back stretch. On the, Edge of the track, the grass is wet, and uh, we lost a couple laps to get down. Uh, and Gail uh, finally got his boost and got out. And then he could draft Donnie, and then uh, the, the rule was if you could race back to the flag, uh, you know, I've counted the flag. Okay. And so, you know, twice the that caution flag came out and Donnie looked uh, like it did. We don't know what the mess is. Let the KLB look back to the flag. Right. And uh, the second time, Donnie's crew told them that Kale was more or less behind, not to worry about it. Uh, well, then all of a sudden, Kale was. Then the lead lap, right? And, uh, he wasn't really a lap down, he was right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, on the restart, Donnie took the lead, but Kale could draft him. I was about a half a lap behind, so two laps down. And uh, just trying to finish the race. Right, right, yeah. So, uh, they got together and crashed. Came by the records and looked, and I saw Dave, uh, Donnie climbing out of his car, and so I knew he wasn't hurt bad. Man, uh, his man. Yeah, he was hurt bad. So I went on around and got the chicken flag, came around and stopped. And Kale's car was way over there, and Donnie was over here. I stopped by Donnie's car. And I Ride back to the garage. Now nah, he's all disgusted. What's that? Kill started saying the wreck was my fault. Your fault. Your fault. Yeah. But you weren't even there. How could I? How could the wreck be my fault? Bought by the flag saying they're over at turn three yeah. and they crashed. Uh, and so I think our question is answered. <laughs> and uh, that did not calm him down. And he moved toward me. Got about 10 feet in the car and stopped and started yelling again. I think that question is answered for the second time. He reminds me and hit me in the face with his helmet. You guys have open face cut helmets on. my nose and yeah. cut my He had his helmet off. He had his helmet off. Right. I had, had myself off out of open face. And uh, blood started dripping in my lap and I told myself I gotta get out of the car and handle this right now or I'll run from him for the rest of my life. So I got out of the car and the guy went to beating on my fist with his nose. <laughs> my story and I'm sticking to right <laughs> to this day. But see, the fallout from that was just incredible because I just remember Ken Square going, we have a fight, we have a fight. And then you're over there and it was just, you know, the book that you and I wrote, um, yeah. Racer's Racer. We we're like, well, we had no, we had to do that in chapter one because yeah. it's just such a phenomenal story. And so everyone, the Northeast was snowed in. Yeah. So they had like three options, you know, you had three channels, unless your uh, rabbit ears with tin foil could get more. So people were watching this NASCAR race. Well, what's this? And at the end, that's all they were talking about. They forget that Richard Petty won. Yeah. And I remember Richard Petty. They were telling us the the stories that Ken Squire said he got mad because they didn't show him. Taking the checkered flag to learn more about your fight. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. Right the finish line he won and then yeah. he went to the, to the skirmish. That's it. Perfect. Yeah. To this day. They oh, find you. Yeah. Yeah. And those little side lights of that whole deal, they find us $6,000 apiece. Well, Kale and Donnie had both won way more than $6,000, so they took the fine out of the prize money. Right. I had won $4,000. 
Just to race the next weekend. Yeah. Right. So I paid, paid my fine. Right. And we were good boys for a couple weeks. They refunded the prize money. Oh. Okay. Well, the prize money was held at a thousand dollars. I kept my five thousand dollars. My four thousand. Right. Oh no, five thousand. Right. Yeah. They still, they still got it. <laughs> we should get it back from you. They claim they use it for good stuff. You know. yeah. I don't know what. what they, they, what they use they, the money to make commercials that they still use. <laughs> exactly. Well, every time the 500 rolls around, it shows up. Um, That's, a, you know, that, there's a thing, you know, so, you yeah. know, how they use that. Yeah. They use that story sure. every year for the last 30 years. 30 some years now. Probably 40. Okay. Oh, and you don't get no royalties from that. <laughs> That's a damn shame. Well, you know, then um, winning your first 500. What do you remember most about that? It was that, in the, that was really neat. Yeah. It was in the uh, 15. Yeah, we went to work for a little bit more. Right. And I had run that Matador the year before. Matador. I had made myself sick working night and day. And Driving my heart out. And I really, really was. You know, I was really feeling bad. I went to the doctor and you know, they even arranged for me to go to Mayo Clinic and see what the problem was. And the doctor would come up and realize that I was going to go out. Okay, I'm tired. And uh, so, got in that car. Really good, and uh, we were leading the race. Got run into, and uh, my friend Buddy Baker spun me. Your friend, yep, Buddy Baker. And uh, came from, well, actually, it was, it was in a qualifying event to call up to. So I had to start way in the back. Said I had to had to give it one more shot. Let the sun shine. So I worked so hard to catch the car back up. I had to give it one more shot. Went out there Sunday and cutting that thing, ran that thing, ran, ran, kept cutting my nose right in the, in the midst of what was going on. Right. Uh, about to. Uh, Twenty laps ago, there was a, a crash, and uh, I had just beat the leader to, to the start finish line to get my lap back. So I, you know, got there before. Yeah, there was no lucky dogs and all of that right. stuff. It it was, wasn't like you it. had to get your lap back yeah. for real. Yeah, didn't, didn't race him to the flag. I right, just got by him and yeah, got drove him around. Him. Got my lap back. And so that let me hit. Been on a fresh tire, and they restarted the race. I just passed him, passed him on in the race <laughs> <laughs> with 20 to go you know, from the back to the front. Yeah. yeah, and of course, you know, the one that everyone really remembers is 1988. Yeah, that was that was a moment. We, um, I remember because we used to get together, my whole family, right? And we watched the 500 together. You two went one, two. We all kind of just looked at each other like, oh, that was a great family moment we had there. It had to be the greatest piece of my career. Yeah. Good. Yeah. But very satisfying. I still don't remember it. That's right, That's because you had the wreck. Yeah. Poking out this. That I got most of that memory back. Right. And he went through a deal here in the this is uh, last year. Yep. Where I gained some more. Memory. Yeah. Good. And, uh, but not to stage on the 500. But that ain't bad. You're going, you're going one way, I'm going the other way. <laughs> you have memories coming yeah. back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a question we have here, um, 
Well, speaking of Daytona, how long did it took, take you to find the draft? When did you start to realize how it, how it worked? Yeah, when did you guys all figure that out? Actually, I, I saw a little bit of the draft right when I heard the first time there. Okay. Uh, I was there for Ralph Stark's uh, 59 Chevy. For Herbie Tillman the year before, right? Herbie uh, was a friend of mine from my And Ralph Starr was brother in law to this other gal and I had these characters dating, so Miss Judy became Miss Judy. Oh, she became Miss Judy. I was right. sorry, yeah. I was driving his 59 Chevy. Right. And, and I actually. Get that thing just right and correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it didn't have much power. 59 Chevy's had to run the 348 engine. That was, the 409 was pretty bad, but the 338 was really good. So when you say that, you know, we're talking about a, a, a factory produced engine that you guys modified, but it wasn't aluminum heads. It wasn't, you know, I mean, this was still factory produced parts that you guys modified. You didn't. It wasn't a racing engine. It not you turned it into a racing engine, but it wasn't. A, it wasn't built to racing. Yeah. I I, I want to keep my my whole premise on stock parts and stock parts. Right. A lot of people, when you said that earlier, um, they they agreed that yeah. stuff. What's uh, what's one rule? We let, let you on NASCAR for a day. What's one rule Bob Gales would change? <laughs> wow! Well, I'm just thinking. I mean, we took uh, no right. templates. No templates. <laughs> <laughs> no Hawkeye. No templates. Would, it would be that. It would be that. Uh, there would be. Uh, Back to 19, probably 1975 race car. 1975 race car. Okay. Which were basically. It was a stock car. It was a stock yeah. car. Yeah. Punch, punch the lights yeah. out. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
This is pretty good. Well, we're in a bar. We are in a bar. We're not in my basement. <laughs> in the studio, the downstairs studio. Um, I forgot what just went out of my head what I was going to ask you. Oh, ownership. So you went from being a driver and then you became an owner. That lasted for a few years. You got, as an owner, you had uh, drivers you had with you had Hutch Strickland, right? You had um, Derek Pope. And uh, who was some other drivers you had? And, uh, Jeff Purvis. Jeff Purvis, that's right. No. Um, I'm trying to think. I can't think of their names. It's because uh, McBenning was with you. So, for any of you who don't know, uh, I worked with Jimmy Benny who worked for Bobby for a long time when Bobby had his shop behind the speedway. And uh, I, I know Hunt was there. And uh, Mike, Mike, Mike started way before we got him in. Okay. Because okay. you had the main and tail car. And that's when Derek drove that one. Yep. And uh, there was another guy, Spencer. Spencer. Oh, what was he like? Uh, yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah? Yes, sir. He drove the car good. He managed to stay good. Oh, it's fine. Love it a little bit. Once in a while. He had to be a handful, though, Jimmy Spencer. Was he a handful to have as a driver? Or did he... Really, he responded pretty good. Okay. Just unfortunately, the car wasn't good enough. You had the uh, Ray, Ray Bestos, Ray Bestos 12 car. Ray Bestos. Yeah. That was the one hot drove. Yeah. Uh, well, I think Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy was the crew chief. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, I yes. There was one. There's okay. So there's something. We're going back in history. Right. But, so Warren and Bobby worked together. Warren worked on Bobby's car. I worked for right. a car that Bobby drove for. Yeah. So yeah, but you. But got, we worked together. Worked yeah. together, sure. So he was driving. You were, so you. I was a kid. You were how? ASA. I got to wax the car. Was it ASA? Change the gear once in a while. ASA car is that what it was? It was an ASA car. Yeah. It was a Miller Highlight, right? Yep. Yeah. So that's when that started. Probably Miller before. Highland yeah. and uh, Miller American. Right. And so everyone remembers their first flight. Warren, what's the first time you ever flew in an airplane? Now, I don't know if Bobby remembers this, but you got I flew into Slinger with you one night. Right. Yeah. And you were flying. Bobby was Bobby flying. Bobby was flying. Right. How cool was that? It was really cool. There was an engine. There was, <laughs> I think it was me and someone else, and there was an engine strapped down in the back. <laughs> They took a seat out to put a motor in the bag. Yeah. And I don't know what kind of plane. I, it, was that a king? Aerostar. Aerostar, right. Okay. Yeah, I have a picture of it right here. My car. Okay. And that was, it was the first. So I've never flown before, right, period. Right. And, and Jimmy and them guys said, you're flying with Bobby. Go, you know, go. And, and I'm like, I've never been on even a, a commercial airline. Right. So super. And uh, I get on the plane with him. I, I think we flew from Nashville. To Slinger right. to get to the Nash Slinger Nationals. Right. You're driving Gunnerman's car, and uh, you decide to buzz the track. Bobby was a pretty good pilot. Yeah. Not really pretty good for anybody who doesn't like Flying. a little, right. a little hot riding. Right. Yep, that's it. it. That's it. So Bobby has a picture of the airplane that now sits in the. Sorry, now sits in the uh, motor scared the Jesus out of me. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Now, did 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 you do the barrel? Oh, so weird. The reason why what was the reason you always buzz the track? Just to let him know he was there. Right. Right. Yeah. What, what, was it so they could come pick you up at the airport? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why you yeah, buzzed the track. Benny probably had that because yeah. Benny came and got right. it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He was the the track. It was. It was. I, he didn't do the full. He just did this. Right. <laughs> Nice, his first flight. He's hanging here. on for dear life. <laughs> you uh, shouldn't have closed your eyes. I didn't. I didn't close my eyes because I'm like, it's Bobby Elson. It's Bobby Elson. The race cars go to where Bobby's going. What's this? Right on over. Yeah. Right on over. He can do it. He tells us clearly what happened. 
fell off the seat and I reached over to get it. And that's what you're doing the barrel roll? I don't know what happened. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Your daughter Carrie used to sit in the back and go like this. She, <laughs> she, she, she said, so she would lean out of her seat yeah. and she'd go like this. And she'd do it. And then Bonnie, the other daughter, would be like, she would think, well, when are you going to do it? And like, we just did it. And it was so smooth. You don't smooth. even know. Yeah, so smooth. Yeah. Uh, it's funny. Anyway, yeah. Uh, that was a... Someone says, when did you start? When did you start? When did the start to scale cars be? Scaling of cars. That's something that was always you had done. Scaling cars. Oh, they yeah, always weighed them. Yeah. Weighed yeah. Them, you know, for the yeah, they used to have grain scales, so though. Nice. Instead of, uh, okay. instead of what would these digital things we use now. NASCAR probably always had a set of grain scales up for everything to make you wear. Yeah, yeah, right. Right back to the old days. Grain scales, yeah. Okay. If anybody don't know what that is, it's a big scale with the weights that you have. Oh, yeah, you manually yeah. slide? Yeah, manually. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, Al Holloway says, to ask you about Richard Petty's Chester car in Charlotte. Does anybody remember that? Richard Petty's Chester, Chester car in Charlotte. Uh, okay. Go to ring a bell. Yeah, right. uh, yeah. All right, that's fine. I got a question for you. Sure. Because uh, and this is off the cuff, but I thought of it. You know, we uh, we talk about people who we think should be in the Hall of Fame, but we but will probably never be in the Hall of Fame. And how? What kind of relationship did you ever have with Smokey Unit? I had a good relationship. With him. Okay. He does belong in the Hall of Fame. We agree 100%. Uh, he really had an ongoing war with NASCAR. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of people that have come up to NASCAR got a dislike for smoking to the freshman between Smokey and the friends that seen you. Yeah. And, and so, you're to me, I know you, and you've done a lot of innovative stuff. You know, uh, a lot of people don't notice, but Bobby had an engine dyno that, instead of a water brake, was a was an airplane propeller, yep. and he built the whole thing himself. And, and that stuff, Huey right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. And that stuff reminded me of what stuff that Smokey did. Right. You know, with uh, being innovative, with if you didn't have something, you just built it. Yeah. And and uh, you know, we talked earlier about. I know, uh, uh, and a lot, I'm going to, this is some stuff that people won't get, but uh, Bobby had a car that had a Watts link, which is a, 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 a two link uh, panard bar, uh, what we call the track bar now, where we have one, well, he had a car that, that had two, and and somehow, you know, a Watts link works, you know, under the rear end as a, as a, uh, a shear. It's, it's a better it's a better system for definitely for road racing. And he got to run it, he told me. And somehow made the they had to change the rule for him not to run it. How many rules did they change because of your innovation? Only a few. Only a few. But still. I mean, most people, yeah. most people would be glad to win. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> at least. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, by the way, uh, like, real quick commercial, Lake Norman Patio and Game Rooms. Uh, the show is brought to you on the website as well. It's brought to you by that. Go check out Brad, Jojo, and Patrick. Go see them there on Broadway School Road. Um, I know we talked about the game room before, but we did the entire downstairs, added pool tables, tabletop hockey, which I challenge anybody to. And uh, good thing to go see them. Also, uh, there's a fundraiser, and I just brought it in here for the uh, Talladega Museum, but we just showed where your airplane is now stored. And they're a little bit of help, they need some help. So, uh, our friend Tim was here, he's doing a fundraiser. Watch out for it'll be December of 2021. But hey, you know what? Make your plans now because uh, they could use their uh, use their help for you. Um, so, we have die cast down here tonight. Bobby has die cast. Some other things, we're going to come by and get some from them. Um, now's the time. Christmas is coming. Start your holiday shopping. And if you have a few extra bucks, we have pop table racer, right. hats, and t-shirts. You know what we ought to do? We, we ought, ought to, do. to take Bobby's stuff, and I don't know if he's got a website. He does. BobbyElson.com. But let's put some of his stuff on our website. We're going to link him off. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to tell you about that. Yeah, okay. By the way, we're going to... We ain't going to take it. It's all, it's all for you. We won't. No, it's fine. It's your money. Um, here you go. Uh, a guy remembers you flying in Lebanon Valley, landed on the drag strip outside the track, <laughs> right? 
Yeah. And he raced the dirt modified, then jumping in the plane and almost caught the finish like wire on a tape. Yeah. Yeah. So so you would fly and land on the drag strip? Yeah. Perfect. I'm here, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Thank God you are here. Didn't you used to land in Talladega on the back stretch too? And try to but you tried to hide doing that? Actually I didn't I didn't land on Talladega. Okay. Anybody mad at any of this stuff? Or was it all kind of okay? I mean, it was, when you're talking about this, there's probably nothing near anything, no, right? No, no, no. Right. So, there's those three of you, or some of the other guys. So did you take off from these places too? Or? Oh yeah. I was just wondering, like you said you landed. Here I am. Because it's a, it's a, here I am, okay. FAA didn't really say anything to you about all that? Hey, uh, <laughs> one day they mentioned it, you really didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> so one day FAA said, hey, like, because you're probably also like, just don't do it again, right? Perfect, that's awesome. Uh, I guess the guy, car you're referring to, the big cheater car you had in Charlotte, with Richard Petty, big engine, wrong, tire on the wrong side. Yeah, that's what he was talking about, just to let you know that. Yeah. Uh, another guy says here, uh, it was a John Rankin, he met you in 2012 in New Brunswick, Canada, and got lucky enough to uh, win the race in front of him, and uh, he guess he raced in front of him. And he can tell he's Canadian, so he spells honor, H-O-N-O-U-R. Canadian. Spell it so it was a good day, eh? so I'll throw that in there. Um, yeah, we're good. We've got a few minutes left here. Um, what does it mean to you now when you go places? And you know, the other day, you told me you mailed out 120 pieces of fan mail. 120 pieces of fan mail. People send it. What do they send if you to sign just pictures? Dice? Yeah. Yeah, personal things. Yeah, right. Uh, once a month. Even a dice card once a month. So you, but you, but you personally take care of all these yourself. And the one thing, the one thing that really, you took the log system of all these people. You did, okay, got it. But for years, you always, you, like, there was this massive file you had on your computer, and you put in like Warren Russell, and that's it. And so, so it was your a fan repeat, base. You just knew that, but you kept track of all that. Yeah. It was amazing. That's how technology. Um, some biggest, some of the big changes that you like in NASCAR as well. Some of the things like through the years you, you like to see. Yeah. Do you like the radio tire? Do you think we did right there? I, I actually, actually, the radio tire got better. Okay. So you really don't care for the radio? I can't be a fan of it. I'm not either. I got a radio tire, actually. Yeah, I'll say how to, I'll use it like this. It was hard to get a grip on a radio tire or something. Well, it's hard to keep a grip. Okay, better, better said. Yeah, and really become evil. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Uh, Bill Cooper wants to know how good was Freddie Lorenzo? Freddie Lorenzo could be on the wheel. He was a real unusual character type guy. Really nervous. Freddie Lorenzo was an incredible crunchy. Okay. Do you have any crunchy for it? For me. For you, that's right. Okay. So he came, he got me to run the old and old car at Rockingham. Right. I was really amazed at the preparation he got to and what he made me aware of in that preparation. How to take care of the car and how to read the chassis I was pretty good at chassis. 
So, so who was your mentor in 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 NASCAR? You know your short track. You know your you know your. Uh, or did you do everything on your own? Did you not have a? Who, who did you look up to when you came in to to NASCAR? Who was who was your go-to guy? Ralph Foley. Okay. So, so how many times were you a Ford guy? Because I know you were you, you were for a long time, right? Yeah, I, I tried to, I tried to count that up the other day. Probably, Try to figure it out. Yeah. Probably uh, thirty some races. Thirty in a Ford. Probably thirty-five in a Chevy. Thirty-five in a Chevy. Ten in a Dodge. Ten in a Dodge. Which was your 200 mile an hour car, or were you a Ford guy when you did that? The Dodge guy, okay. Sorry, I didn't know. Right. Okay, one Clement. In the field. I know that was your. You, 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 had, you had to. That was your. That was your staple. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that and that adds up to eighty-five wins, right? Eighty-five. Eighty-five wins. That's our story. We're sticking to it. Right. Right. That's one. Eighty-five. We have two minutes left. Um, I want to say thank you very much for coming out. Um, you know, going up. There's three ways to die in my house when I was a kid. That's what TVs were on the ground. Walk in front of the television when the Buffalo Bills were on. Walk in front of the television when the NASCAR race was on. Don't ever walk in front of the television when Bobby Allen was on. Because my mom and my stepfather, you know, you were our guy growing up. We moved down here, you know, come close to you. We wrote a book together. All the things. Everywhere we go, people absolutely love you. Can you give me a minute, too? You got a minute. Absolutely love you. And I just want to say, I appreciate you being on it. Okay, so real quick with me, my hero, Bobby Allison. I come home one day, I got to tell my dad, hey, dad, I'm going short track race with Bobby Allison, Jerry Gunnerman. My dad's like, you won't be going nowhere with Bobby Allison. He ain't no kid. You know, my, my dad would need to leave. Okay? Yeah. You know, and I'm like, no, but Jack and Kenny, Hendricks are going with Jerry. And I'm like, and, until I bring a picture home right. that of the car I was working on, I don't think my dad believed me, but I was helping out Bobby Allison to his a car, because I'm a 19-year-old kid, yeah. you know, that's true. Sure. Yeah, and we did win something. We did, absolutely. And it was a great time. We're going to uh, say hi to everybody here. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah. We're going to to the end of this, the Bobby Allison. 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 Cheers. Cheers. Wow. Hey, another great show. Great Thank show. you so much, everybody, yep. for tuning Enjoyed in. It. We appreciate it. We do this every Tuesday night and morning. I think the guests we've had have been fantastic. Phenomenal. And the people that are following us, we appreciate it. We're reaching 42,000 people a month. Can you believe that? And uh, we appreciate you watching. And, uh, We're having fun. Hope everybody else enjoys it. That's it. And this is just a fun show. Bucket of beer. Guys sitting around talking about it. So keep tuning in. We appreciate it. Check out our store and everything. But, um, we appreciate you people. And uh, we will see you next week. Right, my friend? Yes, sir. All right. See you next week.